Okay, let's see what we've got. Been doing a bit of internet shopping to stock up for this project. So we've got an Arduino Mega 2560. There it is. It's not a real one. It's a branded uh, Elgu clone of the um, Arduino. The Arduinos go for about £35. Pounds British. And uh, this cost me, I think, £12.99. You can get them cheaper than that. But at the end of the day, there's such a wide choice. Um, you just have to make some arbitrary decision. This is a case for the Arduino, which we'll use eventually. This, uh, again, you can get there's different cases you can get. This one's a relatively more expensive one. I think it's ten pounds, but you can get them for as little as three or four pounds. Clear acrylic case. So that be that keep the thing protected once we're up and running. Now this is a breadboard system of some sort and an accessories kit so we can experiment with some of this stuff. We've got a bit of everything here. We've got some resistors, some uh, connectors, breadboard, oh we've got LEDs, <laughs> screwdriver, that's a pin out of the Raspberry Pi on one side, well, Raspberry Pi. This is obviously <laughs> intended primarily for Raspberry Pi, but it's got a Arduino shaped slot, so we can put the Mega on there, we can put the breadboard on there. That's just a useful thing to experiment with. What else we got? Oh, we've got the LCD LED seven segment displays. Again, you can get these for peanuts on eBay or on Amazon. These, uh, I think I got four for ten pounds. They come with, and if you can see that in there, the headers unsoldered, so we have to solder the headers on. That's good because often the headers are soldered, so they're pointing up on the same side of the digits. That's not much good. We want them on the back side, so we've got that. The quality control is not great here. That, those, that's two four digit modules positioned together. We need five digits for our application. Anyway, we've got four of those. What else do we have? Oh, we've got a whole bunch of LEDs. Different kinds of LEDs, different colours, different sizes. We've got five millimetre and three millimetre LEDs. Oh. So that's probably more LEDs than we'll ever need, even if we blow some up trying to get the resistors right. And finally we've got a bunch of resistors, but again more resistors, uh, this is far more <laughs> resistors than we need, there's a thousand and something here, but honestly that was only about five or six pounds. So that's what we've got for now, so the next thing is just to get the Arduino up and running with the PC, and then start plugging some of this stuff together. So just a quick update, I've got the Arduino plugged in and kind of going. Now I haven't done this in the way I described in the previous video. I'm not using Mobi Flight at the moment. I've actually plugged the Arduino into the Air Manager PC. Air Manager runs the panels on a separate PC. And you may remember a while ago I made a, a video about this guy. This is a Knobster, which is a, an add-on, hardware add-on for Air Manager, but it's based on a an Arduino. It's a different kind of. It's an Arduino Nano, I think, in there. Um, of course, Air Manager supports hardware devices these days and it supports among other things the Arduino Mega 2650 which is what I have. Now the API has matured quite a bit since the last time I looked at this and I thought it would be a good idea to just have a look at what facilities are available for doing the outputs in Air, Air Manager. Now there's a couple of reasons why that's a good idea. One is it's one less module, you know I'm using Air Manager already. It kind of keeps all the outputs together in a sense, you know I've got the the gauges obviously appear on the monitors but what you can essentially do is create an invisible gauge and run the hardware outputs from that. The other real advantage is Air Manager has native access to the LVARs in things like the Twin Otter Extended model which means I don't have to do that mucking about with the FSU IPC offsets. So I thought I would try this before diving into MobiFlight and what I've done so far I've established the proof of concept if you like. I've got the I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you this. I've got the board plugged in here. It's kind of helpful. The Arduino, well, th this Arduino has a 
you should see a light blinking on there, that's the transmit or the receive light just to show that the board's checking in with windows. There's another LED to the right of that which is one that can be controlled j just as if you plugged in a, an LED to one of the, the digital outputs. And I've actually hooked that up to my yaw damper switch now. <laughs> if I try and press that whilst, whilst showing you this. So if you watch that Arduino board I'm going to toggle the I'm toggling the your damper on and off. I'll just do that demo again. Right, so there's the Arduino, and we're just going to toggle the your damper. So there you go. On, off, on, off, on, off. So this is the Air Manager monitor screen. The instrument's running. It's showing the status of that LED. It's zero percent brightness, hundred percent zero, hundred. Now, um, incidentally, that brightness is controllable from software. I suppose the next thing is uh, I'll try and do that with an external LED. I have to figure out how to hook up the LEDs with. You've got to use a resistor and make sure you get the LED polarity right and things. So I, <laughs> I might uh, have a few catastrophes before I get that right. Now if you're going to try this, nothing's ever as easy as it's supposed to be. So I spent a substantial amount of time today just getting the Arduino recognised by the PC. There are instructions on the Air Manager wiki how to do this. The instructions, uh, and indeed in the forums. Now the instructions may not work as advertised. I've done this twice now. I've done it with the Mega Arduino Mega today and previously when I did the Knobster experiment I had the same problems with the Knobster installing the Nano. What should happen is when you plug the Arduino into Windows it should install a driver for it automatically and that will install a virtual COM port and then when you run the Air Manager Arduino installer that just uploads a program to the Arduino and you're ready to go. Didn't, didn't happen like that for me. Maybe it's because I'm running on Windows 7. I've tried this on two computers. Both have Win 764 home premium. What I suggest you do is you go to the Arduino, official Arduino website, look for the downloads, download the 1.8.1, well the current Arduino IDE, that's the whole development environment. Incidentally it says that requires Windows 10 or Windows 8.1, that doesn't seem to be true, I've installed it successfully on Windows 7, although I haven't run the IDE, but, but it but the point is in the installation of that it installs the driver for the Arduino and it does that successfully. Um, one other wrinkle I found way back when I was installing the, the Nano for the Knobster, something along the way, I think it's the Arduino installer from Sim Innovations, requires the Microsoft.NET framework version 4.7.2 to be installed. Now if you don't have that installed it won't tell you, it just won't work. So you may have to source and install that as well. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. You can just Google it. So there it is, first experiments with the Arduino are encouraging. I will probably next, as I said, try and hook up an external LED. I may have a quick go with the 7 seg displays. So more of that soon.